This invasive plant has blanketed large swaths of the American Deep South. Once a beautiful gift celebrating American independence, it has turned into an insatiable monster, hell-bent on blocking out the sun and covering the world in darkness. Close your windows or it might literally take over your house. This is Kudzu. Hey, I'm Tasha the Amazon and you're watching Floralogic. Today we're talking about one of the world's most invasive plants that begs the question, how much could, could a kudzu zoo if a kudzu, kudzu could. Puerea montana, otherwise known as kudzu, is a woody, climb-happy perennial vine that belongs to Fabaceae, the legume family, otherwise known as the pea or bean family. While kudzu is not the only invasive species in this third largest family of the plant kingdom, it certainly has a reputation for being a baddie. Kudzu is native to East Asia, and more specifically, is at home in the subtropical and temperate regions of China, Japan, and Korea. While it's considered invasive everywhere it grows, there are native insects that work to control kudzu populations in Asia. Other places where there are no natural enemies, the kudzu story has a much different arc. If you live in the US, particularly in the South, you're probably super familiar with these all-consuming vines and the tall tales that come along with them. One even warns that you shouldn't sleep with your window open at night or these fast-growing kudzu vines will find their way inside. You see, one of the main reasons this plant is so invasive is the breakneck speed at which it grows. It can grow as fast as 30 centimeters every 24 hours, growing up to 60 meters per year. That's taller than Cinderella's castle at Magic Kingdom. Though this vine is definitely giving Disney villain vibes. I wish I could tell you there was some diabolical origin story for how this plant took over America, but nope, it was just a poorly planned gift. This invasive Prezi was gifted from Japan to the United States at the 1876 Centennial Exposition in Philadelphia, which commemorated 100 years since the signing of the Declaration of Independence. Nine million visitors flocked to this great exhibition. Considering the population of the entire country at the time was just shy of 50 million, this fair was a big deal. So could you say that the South being blanketed in kudzu is a direct result of the signing of the Declaration of Independence? No, but wouldn't it be fun if you kudzu? Kudzu loves to climb anything it can wrap its tendrils around. Trees, cliffs, walls, telephone poles, your lanky Southern uncle Jim Bob, you name it. In the absence of upward mobility options, kudzu will spread out along the ground. As it creeps, almost every node that makes contact with the soil will take root making this carpet-like ground cover not only thick, but also seriously tenacious. Once it finds a bush or a tree to clamor all over, it's literally and figuratively lights out for the unsuspecting plant. And since kudzu prefers full sun, you know it's doing everything it can to soak up every last ray. The flowers of this vine, which bloom from July to October, are rich purple and fragrant with a slightly grapey smell. Thanks to the family resemblance, kudzu flowers look a lot like pea flowers when they bloom. Kudzu roots are thick and starchy, growing as much as three meters down into the soil and reaching as much as 18 centimeters across. For context, that's as wide as a brand new pencil is long. The roots are hefty, accounting for upwards of 40% of the entire mass of the plant. The starch from the roots is used in Japanese cuisine as a thickening agent that works like corn or arrowroot starch, but apparently with an even finer flavor and texture. Kudzu is also used in the making of traditional Japanese sweets called wagashi. Now that we're talking about how even the most invasive species can be put to good use, we can't ignore Kohem. Kudzu fibers being used for clothing and paper, but it's not just people getting some creative uses out of kudzu. Bees too have been known to produce purple, grape-flavored honey after visiting kudzu blooms. In the 1930s, kudzu was pushed as a key plant for the prevention of agricultural soil erosion and as a soil fertility enhancer, since it's a nitrogen fixer, meaning it puts nitrogen back in the soil instead of pulling it out like other crops. Starting in 1933, the Soil Erosion Service at the time distributed 85 million seedlings. Which gives us about 85 million reasons as to why it took over the South. When it comes to nixing kudzu from the landscape, all is not lost. The most effective method is the good old-fashioned heave-ho. While pulling kudzu up by the root is the best way to eradicate it, a stowaway called the Japanese kudzu bug has been decimating kudzu populations left, right, and center since the late 20 aughts. Maybe someday the South will be fully released from this invasive veil. Until then, I'ma eat some sweets. So what should we talk about next? Let me know in the comments and don't forget to subscribe for new episodes every week. Bye. How much could, could a kudzu could, if a kudzu, 
could zu ku. No. How much could could it could zu ku? No. How much could could it could zu zu if it could zu could zu could? A. Hey. Ma. While kudzu is not the only invasive plant species, if you live in the U.S., particularly in the South, if you live, oh, one even warns that you shouldn't sleep with your windows open, or else these fast-growing vines could come inside. I'm ready in the face. In my face, I'm ready. Here we go. I'm ready. I'm ready in the face. Oh! So could you say that the signing of the declaration? Sorry, I was possessed by a demon. Watch out. You're, you're just now rubbing against the mic. It's a little tough. Mm. Wasn't it down? Oh, maybe it was down a bit. Here? That's better, yeah. Come on, knock on my door. Very good. For context, that's as much as brand new. You, I, I saw that. Yeah, context, weird. Context. context. Now that we're talking about oh, bo. this episode is about bo. Hi, I'm Bo. You're watching Bo. Today we're going to be talking about Bo. Write in the comments what you'd like to Bo. Don't forget to Bo and Bo. We can't ignore cohemp. Kemp, pam, 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 pam. <laughs> we can't ignore cohemp. Kudzu fiber is being used for clothing and paper towels. <gasps> but it's not just people getting creative about uses for covzozos. Why? Bees, too, have been known to create purple, honey-flavored colorings. It's a tiny baby. He's the tiniest, cutest baby. Isn't he? Hey, Amy. Suka, say hi. Say hi, Suka. Suka. <laughs> this is Suka. He is my new gremlin and the best friend. And he loves it when I kiss his face. A lot, a lot. And when he's being a good boy, he sits on my shoulder. Whoa. Wait. Ah! <laughs> Didn't work. We got it. Okay, we got it.